the Planning Commission annual update, Mr. Owens and Mr. Petrosky. Thank you to Sheriff Leonard and Chief Katz for that. Um, hi, uh, Frank Pachowski, Vice Chair Welcome. of the Planning Commission. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Casey, and all of Team Chesterfield sitting in this room and watching. <clears throat> uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to present our 2021 annual report to you. I think everybody should have a printed copy of it as well. Um, I just want to start off by thanking all the supervisors for the appointments, Ms. Haley for, for appointing me and, and, and really the other four supervisors for your appointees because it has been, it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve with the other four that have been appointed to this commission. It really has been um, a, a fantastic experience. So thank you for the appointments, all five of them. Um, I, I'm gonna say we, <sighs> Probably shouldn't change this photo, Rachel, for next year, because I think Commissioner Owens and myself in the back, keeping Chair Fry in the front, probably a, a better picture. <laughs> um, but I, I do want to thank Ms. Fry for her uh, chair and her leadership in 2021. Um, and I, I joked with Commissioner Owens when he agreed to take on chair this year that that was um, some, some amazing shoes to attempt to fill with Ms. Fry, as, as you all know well. Um, but I, I gotta give it to Commissioner Owens. We're about halfway through his leadership and we, we haven't missed a step. He just stepped right in and, and took over and the commission continues to, to fire on all cylinders. Um, so I just wanna thank everybody. So our um, community engagement, so you know, we, 12 months, we have 12 planning commission public hearings, 12 work sessions. But the number here of, of significance is the 94 community meetings, both in person and virtual. So despite all the challenges, COVID, you know, you name it, the fact that we had 94 community outreach meetings, which um, almost doubles 2020, and really, we've just been finding more and more ways to engage with the community, more platforms, um, locations, both physical and virtual, um, social media, you name it. Just the fact that we have been able to be so engaged through these challenging times is a tribute to, to really Chesterfield County, to the, to the staff and, and to you. Uh, so greatly appreciate the opportunity to, to have that much com community outreach. And those community meetings, I should say, um, they obviously include zoning cases, but that's also um, ordinance amendments or comprehensive plan initiatives. Um, so it's, it's the full gamut of, of items that the commission hears. Over here, so we have some highlights. The 121 zoning applications submitted uh, and then 94 applications with a recommendation. That's for approval or denial. So that's 94 cases that staff has brought to us and, and we have made a recommendation. And then just in the county of 2021, 79 of those have already been acted upon by both bodies. So your, your board has heard them and, and made your um, approval or denial action on, on each of those. So uh, again, I, th I think we've been keeping busy 2021 was a great year. This is a, a high overview, and I am really just the, the warm-up act here. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the, the headliner of, of the Planning Commission show, Commissioner Owens, the uh, Commissioner Chair. Thank you. Well done. That was a good opening act. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair Petrosky. Um, thank you, board, for having us here today. We, again, appreciate your all's appointments, and thank you again. Um, I'd like to go ahead and uh, continue from where uh, Mr. Petrosky left off. So um, I want to talk about this, those 79 cases that we brought forward. So you can see those cases are from pretty much all across the county, and it's a slight uptick from where we were in 2020. I think we had a, a 20, 71 cases in 2020, and we went up to 79 cases in 2021. Now, if we take a look at how those cases are actually spread out, 
they weren't in just one particular modality. So uh, the biggest percentage that the commission board dealt with were commercial and residential. Um, so we, you know, we had amendments, uh, second dwellings, signs, mixed use, industrial. Um, there are some cases that are just, um, you know, things like a single chair hair salon go through the Board of Zoning Appeals. But occasionally we'll have a case where someone wants to expand their deck and it goes into the setbacks. So we have some, some strange anomaly of cases that come through like that. But for the most part, we deal with residential and commercial cases. Now, of those residential applications, we have a lot of multifamily, some single family, and some townhouses. We only had 33 of those cases. And um, those applications allowed 8,664 dwelling units. Now, some of those applications were also reworked applications, whereas the units already existed and something changed with the case that actually made the case better in some uh, instances. I can think of one case in the Matoka District where um, it was originally approved for a 13-story high-rise building the density didn't change, but the case changed to where it was a three-story building, and it made it a better case. So that, that's something I just wanted to kind of draw attention to. Um, another thing I'd like to t draw attention to of those um, residential applications, of which four of them, they were um, 33 residential applications, four were age-restricted, permitting a total of 720 dwelling units on age-restricted units. Um, and of those 720 dwelling units, the majority were multifamily. Um, so we also continue to see an uptick in the over 55 units in the county, and that is a large growing population. Those units are occupying pretty quickly. Some other things I'd like to draw attention to in the, um, the annual report highlights is the um, Rockwood Special Focus Area. It's a component of the countywide comprehensive plan and will guide future development decisions in a small geographical area. This special focus um, will promote mixed-use development, incorporating residents, employment, uh, shopping, and recreation. It also provides guidelines for streetscapes, placemaking, site, and building design, and multimodal infrastructure designed to connect new development surrounding communities in Rockwood Park. The implementation committee led by Mr. Petrosky was formed on the heels of the adoption of the Midlothian Community Special Area Plan in 2019. It was comprised of citizens, private professionals, and business representatives. This committee has been working diligently since 2020 to identify projects and initiatives that will bring the vision of this uh, adopted special area plan to life to include the update um, and adoption of design guidelines. Several projects have been initiated as a result of the committee's work, including a study of stormwater drainage within the area of Midlothian Turnpike Corridor study. Um, and there's also the Housing and Diversity Strategy Group led by Dr. Hilton and Mr. Sloan. Um, actually, I actually want to go back to the um, special focus area of Rockwood plan. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag of something we learned in the last meeting. The Virginia planning is the Virginia planning group actually is awarding the Chesterfield planning department for the Rockwood special focus area plan. And they're winning an award for this plan. Um, so that's something they're going to be uh, presented in July, which is, is pretty nice. They submitted it, it won, and we actually just had the first case using this plan come through the commission this past meeting. So uh, I have to give credit to staff for their work on this plan and Mr. Petrosky for bringing that forward. Uh, the Housing and Diversity Strategy Group, led by Dr. Hilton and Mr. Sloan, also reviewed issues and researched legal tools available in Virginia to address housing needs. In September of 2021, the Planning Commission heard a presentation and reviewed various approaches, such as an affordable dwelling unit ordinance, um, tax abatement, cash profit exemption, proactive property acquisition, and support for local housing nonprofits. Numerous zoning-related tools that can be helpful are being ex explored through the Zoning Ordinance Modernization Project, project other known as ZOMOD. Uh, more dialogue will continue in the coming year to address this topic. Another exciting project that kicked off in 2021 was the Genito 288 Special Focus Area. This special focus area will establish a strategy that builds on the success and attraction of the River City Sportsplex. While guiding redevelopment efforts in the area, initial community outreach of the project drew over 1,100 responses to a survey inquiring input about the desired improvements to the study area. In 2022, as this project moves forward, we will seek to develop shared division with the community that will enhance the area for all community residents. And the last project that officially kicked off in 2021 was the Zoning Ordinance Modernization Project. This multi-year effort to rewrite the county zoning ordinance began with a diagnostic phase where an analysis report identified recommendations for moving forward was developed. This project is now in the drafting phase and will continue to progress throughout 2022 and early 2023. 
Some other highlights from the 2021 annual report is the Route 1 residential overlay. Um, over the last year, the Commission recommended approval of these five ordinance amendments for zoning and one subdivision. Um, my personal favorite of this was the keeping of chickens. If you watch that meeting, I actually had a, uh, a crystal chicken I put up there, and I grew up on a chicken farm. So the, the chicken amendment was just something interesting to me. I, I never thought moving to a suburban area, I would actually deal with chickens. But it was, it was refreshing to see that people still raise poultry even in, in uh, suburban If you want to deal with uh, beavers at some point, Mr. Owens, I've got a spot in my district uh, uh, that I can take you out to if, you're, if you want some variety of your wildlife. But uh, that's, that's good to know. I'd like yeah. to see you. Uh, citizens that want the beavers? <laughs> we might. We might. <laughs> so um, the Melodian Special District Amendment was certainly a highlight for us to mention as a significant accomplishment this year. The amendment was the work of the Melodian Implementation Committee. It addresses design standards and other ordinance provisions related to the office, commercial, and industrial districts located within the Melodian Special Design District. It also, for the first time in our ordinance, guides mixed-use development. There are also parking changes and incentive provisions, and the amendment addresses elements such as building design, setbacks, streetscape, and architecture. So now I'm going to talk about what we're focusing on for this upcoming year. Uh, we'll be continuing to deep dive into the drafting of the new zoning ordinance with the goal of taking the new draft to community meetings towards the end of this year. Uh, in the coming months, staff will be presenting a draft overlay ordinance for the Rosebud development. This development of approximately 1,400 acres was initially rezoned in 2008. This project set idle for quite some time due to various factors. However, over the past year, work on the overlay has been revived. Discussions with the property owners and county departments about components of the overlay ordinance continue with the expectation of community outreach and public hearings this year. The Common Area Ordinance Amendment is a collaboration between the Home Building Association of Richmond and planning staff. This effort is designed to evaluate the challenges staff and developers encounter when calculating the requirement for common area for small lot cluster single family developments. Ordinance text changes, ordinance text changes include a revised definition of common area, specific criteria for qualifying spaces common area, and adjusting the amount of common area required for a cluster single family development. One of the things I'd like to highlight about the, um, the common area amendment is that one of the things we heard from the development, um, I guess the development community was when it came to common area, the county was ambiguous sometimes with their feedback. So this is going to help us come up with something that is common, referenceable, and measurable. So it's a, it's a good, good amendment. Um, Let's see. Staff will continue to work in collaboration with us and the community along with interested stakeholders to develop a draft plan for the Genito 288 special focus area as well. The comprehensive plan modernization effort is before you for consideration this evening. This effort modernizes the comprehensive plan through a single plan amendment that updates four older area plans, including the Jank, Chicken, Chippenham, I got chickens on my mind still, sorry about that. The Jank, Chippenham development area plan, the Route 360 corridor plan, the Eastern Midlothian plan, and the Northern Courthouse Road community plan. This effort modernizes the outdated land use categories in these older plans so that they will better guide development proposals in these areas. Chapter 15 of the Comprehensive Plan, the Public Facilities Plan, is being updated. The, this effort will utilize information from the new Stratus database and streamline the document to focus on big picture needs while tying closely with the county's capital improvement program and potential future bond referendum. So going back to statistics, in my, my uh, private life, I actually work a lot with statistics. So let's talk about the uh, inquiries this year. So. There's a lot of projects who came through, and this is our official numbers you're seeing here. So um, to give you an idea, uh, this shows some different numbers from the other slides, so don't be confused what, with what we've already shown you. Uh, this slide takes a look at only the zoning inquiries that were presented by applicants to planning staff in calendar year 2021. We had 384 inquiries. Of the 384 inquiries, less than half of those progress onto the next step of the process, which is to have a pre-application meeting. Only 156 of those original 384 resulted in a pre-application meeting. That's 40%, okay? And of those 156, of, and again, of the 384, we received 84 zoning applications out of that 384 for 22%. Now, this number does not include a phone call made to a supervisor or a planning commission of saying, hey, I've got this idea for a project in your area, what do you think? 
well, I don't think it's probably going to work because it's, it doesn't, you know, have the land use plan. Feel free to uh, put it in, but that's some of the challenges you're going to face. So it doesn't cover those. And I don't think we actually track those, but I would tend to think this number is probably closer to 500 if we were to think about that. Mr. Owens, this is such an important slide for people to see in the, in the public, I think, because there is this sort of common conception out there, misconception that, um, you know, there, whatever case comes through, you know, the, the board is, you know, taking it in and, and it's, it's, it's going through, but we have so many inquiries I know that um, my fellow supervisors get calls just like I do and say, hey, what do you think about this? And, and well, I think that's a terrible idea and I don't think it'll go anywhere. And that happens uh, frequently. Uh, so I really do think um, people need to see the process. They need to understand that there is a filtering of the wheat from the chafe and um, that you all and staff together along with this board in this process really do vet these cases and work on mitigation of these issues as they come up in individual cases. So I just think this is such an important slide. So thank you for sharing this one in particular. Right, oh, you know, some of the people who actually submit cases are several reasons why they don't do it, such as they don't comply with the comprehensive plan, they're gonna have uh, adverse impact on the surrounding properties, and um, typically those projects never proceed, fall mostly into those two categories. If I could just um, Mr. Angle. quickly, um, beyond that, only 79 cases were actually approved. And if you just take that from the official inquiries to what the board actually approved, I think we figured it up to be about 21% of the official inquiries actually get approved by this board. So there's a lot of belief that this board approves everything that comes to it. Well, most of the time it's gone through this process and we get down to the end, but we see, if I'm not mistaken, there was uh, 84 zoning applications that came to us, 79 were approved, which means five weren't. Um, and that's, all of those statistics are fairly closely in line with what we saw last time we actually got these numbers, which was around 2019's statistics. I think then it was 26% made it to the board, 24% were passed. Now it's more like 21%, or well, 22% that make it to the board, 21% passed, similar. Um, but it's very important, as you said, for people to know that most of the cases actually do get weeded out. Um, and in some of those cases that were passed were somebody wanted to be able to um, keep, well, they wanted chickens or, or they wanted to be able to put a um, mobile home on their property for seven years or something like that. Um, some of them could even have been that they uh, have one tonight, have a gentleman that wanted to have the proffer lowered on his one lot that he's trying to build on after many years and to keep it in com with, you know, consistent. consistent, thank you, for with the other um, zoning that's been done in the county, we will be looking at lowering his proffer tonight. And that counts as one of those 79 cases. So the real number of cases that has a big impact to the county is probably less than 15. And, and if I might just add to that, because of the fine work of Mr. Owens and his and Mr. Petrosky and that, uh, and our planning commissioners along with our staff, many of these cases don't look anything like what the application looked like by the time they get to us. Because, you know, had they come to us straight out the way they stood with no real work being done, we probably would have denied the case. But because of the time that our staff and, again, the Planning Commission puts into these cases, by the time they come to us, it's a very different looking case. And so I think that's really important that folks realize too, that that's the importance of our Planning Commission and the work they do in working alongside staff, that when it comes to us, it's polished. It's a pretty nice um, case that's meeting the requirements and the interests that we believe best serve the citizens. So I, one of the things I get asked which, which sometimes. Which is a big thank you. 
oh, that you should here. please pass along to all of you I, because you know we really cannot tell you enough how much we appreciate your that entire team i will definitely pass that along one of the things i get asked is uh, how i got on the planning commission and i always tell the people the story about mr carroll and i didn't know each other in, until he interviewed me for the planning commission and i still remember him coming to my table and we talked about it and he said well there's a time commitment to it you got a meeting a month and it'll get pretty intense sometimes and it's more intense than I thought it would be, and I think it's more intense than he thought it would be too because we didn't expect the caseload that we have. But it, it's actually a very enjoyable thing to do, and it's a good way to serve the citizens of the county. Um, have, have you ever it, asked Mr. Petrosky how he was asked? Maybe we don't want to discuss that publicly. <laughs> that might take a whole other, uh, whole other session for might, you guys. It might have involved something a little, yeah, harder than just iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> so, well... I would be remiss if I also didn't thank planning staff on this because, um, you know, planning staff sometimes gets the raw end of the deal from the public. Um, we've seen how sometimes they're treated in public meetings. And, but just for a few minutes, I want to talk about the things they do that are really unseen by people. Um, the 157 subdivision applications, those are things that the commission and you all, we never see. 102 site plan applications, and those site plan applications take time. They spend many hours on those. 44 variances or special exception applications, 11,200 calls were received by them last year. 2,619 walk-in customers and 50, around 50 plus or minus data research requests that they, they process and get back to whoever has requested them. So, um, and then, you know, the Board of Zoning Appeals is part of that and the, the commission serves the, I'm um, not the commission, but the planning department also works with the Board of Zoning Appeals. So the commission itself really appreciates staff and what they bring to the table. Um, they do a good job of packaging these things up and bring them to us. We don't always agree with the recommendations, but you know, they, they do their part, we do our part, you guys do your part, and that's just kind of how it works. Guys and ladies um, do their part. So um, this year we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, coming out of COVID, the applications are picking up slightly. Um, I just want to thank all of you all for your time. and. Um, it's been a pleasure being here today speaking with you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and um, we certainly appreciate all the work, and thank you to staff and the audience. Thank you to um, our fellow commissioners. We rely on your good work daily, and we are so, so appreciative. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I want to also Mr. Holland. I appreciate your work in the cases and answering all the questions before they get here so we don't have to, to delay cases and defer cases. And, continue to, again, uh, and upon the citizens using their valuable time to sit through the many cases that they have to listen at before their case comes. So I think it's so very important to utilize everyone's time, and I applaud your efforts in doing that as well. One quick question, how's the online process going with regard to technology and sites and, of course, uh, cases? How is that going? So ELM was recently implemented, and there's, we're still getting through some of the challenges with ELM. There are some things I think we could do better that I'm, I'm preparing to make some personal recommendations to, to uh, planning for, such as our community meetings that we have. It would be nice to have all those in one location where people could sort them by district and be able to see where a community meeting is being held and what district and what night. Um, easier access to get to the case files and be able to see parts of the case before they're presented in a staff report so people can actually see that information and, and get response, you know, get information before they come. Um, I would tend to think that, and most of the commissioners will agree with me, sometimes when we go to the community meetings, it would be nice to be armed with some of more of the facts of the case before we go to those community meetings and you guys as well before we get there and we hear the surprises of some of the questions being asked from the audience. Excellent, excellent. Well, greatly appreciate that, and I look forward to the information on uh, housing diversity and where we're going. I think that's an opportunity for us uh, moving forward, and certainly in some areas in there, we're going to be looking at some cases over there as well. So, look forward I understand. To that. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Yeah. Sure. I want to thank you and and the entire planning commission for all your hard work, and I think it is important to. Um, to note for the community that um, working in planning is not a nine to five job. Uh, many uh, members of the staff um, have to come out when we hold all these community meetings, which are usually held at night after hours out in the community. When That's when the community is no longer at work and they're available to come to these meetings. And so it is a lot of um, uh, work that's put on staff that is um, not necessarily, I think, people know about. 
comments. Yeah. Thank you so much. And the, the last comment I, want to, comment I want to make is I thank the planning staff, but all these meetings where we have in the community, we have CDOT, we have environmental. Planning really encompasses a lot of the departments in the county as part of this process. So planning is more than just one department over in a community development building. So, thank you. Thank you so much.